Hey Code Crew, today I'm going to show you how to build a simple soundboard app. A, B, C, D. A, C, B. Now this is a great practice app for beginners and we're going to do it in four simple steps. All right, let's roll. with Chris, the place to be if you want to learn how to make an app. I'm Chris and I'm so glad you're here. Here's the plan. We're going to start by building the user interface and then handle the user tapping. We're going to add the sounds and then finally play the sounds. And at the very end, I have a challenge for you if you're up for it to modify the project. So let's dive in with setting up the UI. We're going to start by creating a new single view app. I'm just going to call this the soundboard and I'm going to save it in my apps folder on my desktop. Then we're going to jump into the storyboard and we're going to add uh, a stack view, a vertical stack view to be specific. And we're just going to put it right there. Now I hit the shortcut keys, command shift and L to bring up that object library, but you can also click this button as well. And then just search for stack view. What we're going to do is have this stack view highlighted and we're going to come into here and then uncheck constraint to margins and enable all four constraints. And for all of these, choose the view, hit this little drop down and choose the view. This is going to ensure that the stack view is going to reach all the way to the edge of the screen because the safe area is a margin type of area where we want it to reach all the way to the edge of the screen. Uh, we're gonna add these four constraints so you can see that it touches all four sides. Then we're going to go ahead and add a horizontal stack view this time and just put it in there. You can see that this horizontal stack view is inside the vertical one. So that's correct. I'm going to hit command shift L to bring up this menu again. And this time I'm going to drag this guy directly into this do uh, document outline. The reason is because I don't want to accidentally put this horizontal stack view inside of the other horizontal stack view. And it's going to look like this. If you do this, don't worry about it. All you need to do is drag it back out so that the vertical stack view contains the two horizontal ones. Now, in order to get four quadrants equally, we're going to set some attributes on this vertical stack view. Go into this inspector here. And for distribution, we're going to say fill equally. And I'm going to highlight these two horizontal ones and again, change the distribution to fill equally. Finally, we're going to add some buttons. So hit uh, Command Shift L. I'm going to search for button this time. And let's put it in there. I'm going to add another one to that horizontal stack view. All right. And we're going to add a third and a fourth. The third and fourth are going to the second horizontal stack view. So now you can see that we've got four buttons like that. And just to check if you've got the uh, right layout going on, you can run your project and you should see your four buttons. And even if you press command left and right to rotate the phone, you should be able to still have four quadrants. And that's when you know you've set things up properly. Now we're just going to configure some text and some colors. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, highlight. Well, we're going to do this one by one because we're going to be setting the colors. So let's select any button, go down to the background, and we're going to choose a color. So uh, I've recently used these ones, so it's here. But if you wanted to set a custom color, you just select custom. It's going to pop up this little menu for you to select your own color. All right, here's my second button. I've got maybe this red or pink, this third button, blue, and then this last one. Oops. All right, so now let's change the text and we can do all of them together. Uh, let's change the font, I mean. So we're gonna hit this little T right here and change it to custom. And I'm gonna change it to bold. And I'm just gonna up that font size to look something like that. And now I'm gonna change the text for the individual buttons. Actually, you know what? I wanna change the text color too. So I'm gonna highlight all of them, change the text color to white. Right now I'm going to change the text of each button. I'm going to call this A, B, C, and D. The next thing to do is to handle the user interaction. Now we're going to handle the tapping of these buttons. And the way we can do that is by 
hooking up IB action functions to each of these buttons when they are tapped. So go ahead, open up Assistant Editor. On the right hand side, you should see Automatic View Controller. And we basically want to find the last closing tag of this class. And right above there, we're going to be adding these IB action methods. So if it makes it easier, um, you can drag, you can create these uh, IB action methods from the document outline, which is what I'm going to do here. Hold down control, click and drag. And by default, the connection type should be action. If it's not, just change it to action. And the name, I'm going to call it a tapped and that creates an IB action. Now I'm going to hook up an IB action function for every single one of the four buttons, but at the end, I'm gonna issue a challenge to you to do it with one single IB action. But for now, we're going to hook up an IB action for each one, just so you can see how this works before we get more complicated. All right, so we've got C tapped, it's definitely a lot of code replication here but you know that's all right when you're just starting out and you're not trying to do everything you know the best way all right so if you go back into your view controller you should have all of these four IB actions these little guys should be filled in and if you click them they'll tell you kind of what button they're hooked up to now let's add the sounds I created a couple of sound files and we're going to add them to our project right now. So I'm going to go here and create a new group just to keep things organized. I'm going to call them sounds and then I'm just going to drag my mp3 files into the sounds group and it's going to pop up this guy. Select copy items if needed. That's going to include the sound files into your project folder to keep it all in one place and make sure add to targets is checked on because this is very important. If this is unchecked like that, when you package up your app into the bundle, um, which is just kind of the app package, if you will, um, those sound files won't get included. So you wanna make sure that this is enabled. All right, click finish, and you should have your sound files right there. And just to double check, if you select each one of these files, you should be able to see target membership. Uh, this is enabled. Right, because if they're not enabled, then you're not going to be able to reference those sound files. Finally, we're going to play the sounds. Now we're going to play the sound files using the AV Audio Player class. The first thing you want to do up here is import AV Foundation because that's going to contain the class that we need. We're going to say var audio player is equal to AV Audio Player and we're going to make it an optional. This means that we're not creating the audio player object right then and there. We're only creating this property that is going to store a reference to that audio player object once we do create it. So instead, we are going to do that inside each of these IB actions. So let's take a look at uh, how we're going to create one of these guys. So AV audio player, and you can see here a couple of things I want to point out that you have to pass in a URL object. This URL object points to the sound file, which actually is inside of our app bundle, right? We've added it right here. That's why I said it was so important to make sure that these MP3 files are included in that target membership. The second thing I want to point out is that creating this AV audio player object has this throws keyword. And that basically means that it may throw an error if the audio player object isn't able to be created. So we have to do some error handling just to be prepared to handle that error. So let's go ahead and see how this is done. We're going to need to pass in a URL object. Let's create one up here so that we can do that. I'm going to say let URL equals, and the way we get a path to that MP3 file is we can say bundle dot main dot URL for resource with extension, and this is basically going to look inside the app bundle for this project, and we're going to be able to specify that the resource we're looking for is a and the extension is mp3. You don't need the dot. And we're going to pass the URL into right here. Uh, and because this 
creating this AV audio player object can potentially throw an error, we have to put the keyword try right in front of it. And we have to wrap this in a do catch block. So what happens is if you're reading it like plain English, it's saying do whatever is inside this code block right here, starting from this to here, do that. And inside that code block, you're going to try to run some code. And then if it errors, if it throws that error, it's going to jump into here and catch it. And you're going to be able to handle that error. So we're just going to say error, and that's going to print an error out into the console. And right here, we have an error because this URL object could potentially be nil, meaning that it can't find that file. Like for example, if I put f and we don't have f.mp3, then it's not going to be a valid URL, right? So we can write a line of code here. We can use something like a guard statement, uh, which we can basically ensure that it has found that URL. We can say guard URL is not equal to nil, else return. So this is uh, make sure that we've got the URL, otherwise abort. Here we can say getting the URL, and then here we can say uh, create the audio player and play the sound. And so when we come down here, we know that for sure that URL contains the path. Otherwise, it would have hit this line of code and exited the function. So we can go ahead and use an exclamation mark to um, basically tell Xcode, don't worry. We know there's an object in there. You don't have to check or complain. Now, before we run the project, we're going to actually have to play the sound file. So go ahead and call the play method. So now let's run the project and see if we can get the sound playing. And if we can, then we are going to basically duplicate this code. It's going to want to use my microphone a, for some reason. A, A, A. All right, cool. So now let's stop the project. And we're basically going to replicate this code for each of the other functions, changing the file name. Now, if you're a little more experienced, then you'll know that this is, you know, not the best way to do it because we've got all of this code duplicated. But when you're just starting out, um, I, I don't personally think it's a problem because I know that as you're going to get further and further into your iOS journey, you are going to get better and better. And plus, we're not doing this for an enterprise C, client C, D, or anything A, like that. B, D, C, C, D, 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 All right. C, B, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, cool. so D. now that you've got this working with all of this replicated code and four IB actions, I want to challenge you to get this done with one IB action method um, and not having to duplicate any of this code. I'm going to give you a hint, though, in the button that you've got right here, there is a tag property right here that you can set. Uh, and then in the view controller, in the function, you're going to be able to read that tag. You can access that property. The sender is actually the UI button. If you feel up for the challenge, simply use the link in the description below or click right up here to download the source code. And if you have an app idea, but you're not sure where to start, definitely check out my seven day app action plan. It's a free course that's going to set you off in the right direction. I'll see you in the next video.